Hello, my name is Chris Dadler and I am going to go over how to find and use a seer stone. Now, I've been interested in seer stones uh, for most of my life due to the culture that I was brought up in. They were mysterious and I always wanted to find one of my own. And so wherever I'd go, hiking, different places in the country, um, I'd be kicking rocks and especially creek beds, be looking for a seer stone. And recently I've discovered an entire field full of seer stones, which to my amazement, I thought they would be scattered here and there, but there is a, a special place in Wyoming that is an old um, lake bed. And there's a lot of silt in that lake bed, and then there's a lot of stones. And uh, it no longer has water in it, and the wind blows constantly, and it blows the um, the silt against the stones once they're partially exposed and it polishes them. I also call this field um, full of potato rocks because they about the size of a potato, a lot of them, but they're slightly polished and that's important that a, uh, your seer stone isn't just a common rock that you just pick up off the ground. It's important that um, it has to look, it has a certain look to it. It's just a little out of the ordinary. It can't be just an ordinary rock, but it's it's gotta be slightly extraordinary. Now, it can't be too much so, like a crystal. Crys crystals just don't work. Um, and maybe they're used for other things, but for seeing, uh, crystals are not, not a good thing. Some people think, you know, like a crystal ball, you look at a crystal ball, that's a hoax. Um, they're not, they're, they're not as effective, they just don't work like a real seer stone works. And after discovering this field full of seer stones, I realized that um, and, and testing them. I realized that there's different seer stones for different things. Like one stone um, could uh, reveal the future. Uh, and then another stone, you look and it reveals the past. Um, so there's a variety of things that these seer stones can do. Um, some are good for finding objects, lost objects. Um, so there's a variety and, and you kind of don't know what you got until you start using it. And I'll explain how to use it here a little bit later. Now, the seer stones I'm going to put up on eBay and uh, for sale. Uh, I'll, I'll make, I'll price it appropriately. Uh, they're not going to be real expensive. Um, and then, uh, you'll know that it's a real seer stone because it will come with a certificate of authenticity. And I'll also, uh, include what that, uh, seer stone, uh, will be looking, what you'll be able to see with that seer stone. Now, to find them, that's kind of a technique that takes a lot of experience and skill. So there's people out there looking for, for steel seer stones. And I'm, I'm here to tell you, I've looked and uh, it's been very difficult to find any. I just hadn't found any until I found that field, an entire field. 
So I'm not get, I'm going to be very vague about where that field is because I don't want anybody else to, uh, you know, use these um, without proper training because what they can reveal, uh, not everybody's supposed to know about. So uh, there's, I know these these work. They're going to be certified, but there is particular situations um, that you need to be in for it to properly be used. And the first situation um, for the seer stone to be effective you you need to be in a community or in a, in a group where folk magic is accepted. Um, if like they're into science and facts, uh, the seer stone won't be effective. You'll be able to see, but uh, to convince other people that of what you are seeing. Um, it just won't be accepted. So, folk magic, uh, I would say superstition, uh, people who believe in Sasquatch, um, witches, people who believe in witches, that, that's a good indicator that the seer stone will work. Um, there's Christian groups that the seer stone will work well with. I would say like, uh, Quakers and Shakers. Then there's the, uh, rattlesnake worshipers. Uh, I think they would be accepting of the visions that you would see with the seer stone. Um, probably holy rollers. Um, it would be most effective when they're playing the rock music and then uh, you screaming your vision into the microphone. I think uh, that would be well accepted. Uh, some Mormon communities would, would possibly accept. Uh, and then po possibly, maybe I shouldn't even mention it, but Jehovah Witnesses possibly would accept your visions that you would see with the seer stone. Now, I'll, sh I'll show you a few seer stones so you kind of get the idea of the look that they need to have. Um, it's like right here. This one, this one sees the future. Now you notice that it's got a slight sheen to it. Now, if I hold it next to, I have a, a granite river rock, and it doesn't really matter what they're made of as much as their appearance. The slight sheen helps convince others that you're seeing visions with it. Um, now, this one, like you can see a granite. It's just a, a regular granite stone out of a creek and then you'll see there's a slight sheen that goes with the seer stone compared to the granite stone that sheen is important uh, because it sets it apart it doesn't uh, appear to be like a regular rock the smooth edges you don't want one that is just like a rock that just fell off a cliff it's got sharp edges on it the smoothness it needs to be smooth and a slight sheen to it now like i explained this one that got its sheen from who knows how many years of silt blowing against it in this area the wind blows like 360 days a year so it just would polish it over time and that sheen the sheen is very important because it sets it apart from other stones. Now, 
Also, in order for uh, the seer stones to be effective, uh, the seer, I mean, the stone works. It's whether or not the seer is in the proper state of mind or has the ability. Uh, the the stone, like I, like I mentioned, it's certified. The stone works. But in, or, in order for it to be effective to this group who is, uh, they really need to be susceptible to the power of persuasion, you know, easily hypnotized. Um, th th that's a good indicator that the visions will be accepted because what's the use of a seer stone if the visions aren't accepted? So <clears throat> now the seer needs to have certain abilities and um, an active imagination is, a, is one of the top priorities. Besides the group that you're uh, conveying the visions to, um, being susceptible to your your uh, visions and accepting those visions, um, an active imagination is is probably one of the top priorities uh, for the seer to to have, because you're not you're not you don't have your eyes open while you're seeing. Uh, you're closing your eyes. Uh, one of the Traditional ways of using a seer stone is to put it in a hat, and then it's a hat um, that light can be shut out. So you stick your seer stone in the hat, and then stick your head down in the hat, and then uh, you can have your eyes open. But I think eyes shut is is more effective. And what you're seeing is a vision in your mind's eye. So it's, it's in your brain. You're not actually seeing with your eyeballs. Because if you just look, uh, if there's enough light to see anything, you're just going to see a, a rock sitting in the hat. So an active imagination is critical. Um, if you had, let's say, J.R.R. Tolkien type imagination, if you can create entire worlds in your mind. Um, J.K. Rowling type of imagination. Um, that would be extremely helpful in being able to see uh, grand visions and to be able to portray or, or um, communicate those grand visions um, to your audience, followers, um, whatever group. Charisma. For the acceptance of these visions, you know you have to communicate them well, have, have good, a good um, imagination. But you really need to have a charismatic um, personality that just really helps in the persuasion of what you're seeing comes from the stone. And you can say, well, you know, it's a vision from God, a higher power from the stone. Uh, any of those will work. I think saying it's from God is probably more effective than just the stone. But to be charismatic, and a uh, narcissist, that helps too. If uh, you're comfortable with manipulating people into uh, believing what you have seen in your mind's eye, uh, manipulation is very effective for the acceptance of those visions. Um, of course, you know, we're talking about a uh, a group that is susceptible to persuasion and folk magic that that's important 
if you would like to go to UCLA and try to convince people in their science department of what you're doing, this just won't be accepted. So uh, they would be very difficult to manipulate. They're too much into science and facts and that whole whatever. So manipulation is is pretty darn important um you really need to have that inner need this desire to convince people of what you're seeing and that it it's important your visions and that they need to uh follow your lead you become the uh, leader of, of the group. Um, I think at this point, I, I probably should just point out some of the seer stones, just give you some more examples of, of the seer stones that I have found. Um, they don't all have to be like, uh, you know, egg shaped. I think the egg shape is pretty important. Um, I think it helps that you can put it in your pocket. The size of an egg is, is pretty good. It slips in your pocket easy. This one is a little bit big. It's a little flatter. You can see that it does have that sheen to it. So it makes it a little bit unusual, but not too extraordinary because um, there's the, the powers that are in the stone need to be uh, mysterious, but just not too extraordinary, or else they just, you're just looking at it going, that's just, you know, a gemstone or something. But it just needs to be appearance semi-ordinary, but not. So the sheen really helps. This one's a little on the larger side. Um, I like, the, the ones I've collected that are, are more this size. This one here is... Now, this has some rough edges on it. But it does have that sheen. As you can see. I, I haven't cleaned these, but... This one... This one's, this one's interesting. It's got the pits. It's still uh, shiny. It has that satin kind of finish to it. Uh, almost looks like... A dinosaur shat it out, but uh, I think it's fairly convincing. Uh, potato rocks. I have many that are in the shape, roughly, of a potato. Um, this, it, it's a little bit bigger, but it can, you know, fit in your pocket. It's got the sheen, which is important. And then, this one is, this one is, I like this size. This is pretty good because you need to be able to slip it in your pocket because you can't just have it out all the time. You want it uh, to, for it to retain its mystery. You don't need to flash it or, you know, don't, don't have it out there for too long. Just pull it out of your pocket and slip it into your hat and, um, in the right setting. And then, uh, you know, ha I, I think it's important that you probably would have somebody record your visions as you had them. It's kind of hard to, you know, recall it after the fact, but if you're, you're speaking uh, aloud and then somebody's there to, to write it down or, or record it with their phone, the vision as you had it, then you can go back through that vision and, um, uh, you know, analyze it. Uh, like this one, like I said, <clears throat> this one shows the future and it doesn't go that far into the future. I probably discount this one because what it shows is just not very nice. It's kind of a post apocalyptic, uh, gray, dull and dreary future 
then most people don't want to see that or hear about that. So I'll probably discount that one. Now this one, this one's pretty cool because, um, I'll show you the, that's the, that's the best side of it. This one shows hidden treasures uh, that people have buried. They could have been ancient uh, Americans, uh, Vikings, um, Indians. A lot of their stuff is not worth that much. I mean, you dig up some arrowheads or whatever. That, that's just, you know. If you take it down to South America, you might be able to find some gold. You know, that would be probably worthwhile. Um, this one, sorry, I had the wrong. Now this one uh, shows fortunes up to a week. So um, things that'll happen within a week, no, no further than a week. But uh, you can see people's future. You'll, you'll need to have them hold it first if you're going to be um, predicting their future or, or um, revealing their future. So have them hold it until it gets warm. And then, like I said, it needs to be dark. You can hold it and close your eyes. I, I prefer the hat. I think the hat works. I've used other hats other than that one's block out light, I just, uh, you know, they have a mesh ball cap, the back of it's kind of mesh and open, but it still, it still works. It helps you, you know, focus in on the vision. Um, now, this one, I'll probably discount that one too. It just, what it, it shows um, people's diseases that they have, their, um, their illnesses, and uh, it also helps to um, n not only diagnose but give treatments for, you know, certain illnesses. I've seen uh, psoriasis and uh a, there's it sees constipation a lot to tell you the truth a lot of there's a lot of constipated people that are in you know pretty miserable and are looking for help and um so it doesn't really you know you can't get rich with it you can help people hey eat some fiber is you know typically the diagnosis um to drink more water. Um, now, <clears throat> oh, I don't have it with me. Darn. Now, that I probably keep the one. I think I left it in my truck. I'll probably keep this one because uh, it reveals people's salvation. It lets you see their eternal reward and um, that I think is people are willing to um, sacrifice a lot to find that out so um, I'll probably hang on to that one uh, if I do sell it it's gonna be expensive but I've already seen you know I've looked and seen my salvation I'm there, so I'm not worried about it. Uh, there's there's the damnation part, too. I mean, there's some people that you'll be seeing for that they're not going to make it. And uh, telling them they're not going to make it is kind of uncomfortable. So, anyway... Um, I guess I can go into detail about clear, you know, when you're, when you're, when you're using a seer stone, you have to be in the right state of mind. Uh, not thinking about like, if you're hungry, that's not a good time to try to see anything. Cause all you're going to see is probably a sandwich or something. 
So, uh, you know, be well fed. And then uh, hydrated is important, but not overly so because you don't want to get into a vision and think about, I got to take a pee. So, um, you know, be prepared, proper state of mind, uh, receptive audience. If you're seeing for a group or say just a person, uh, one, you know, one person at a time, it's, I think it's, it's, it's better in a group, really. You need to have like two or three people there so they can all witness it. Maybe one of them record it while you're seeing. Um, I think in the future what I'll do is uh, use uh, maybe my uh, maybe my seer stone that sees you know your eternal salvation or not. Uh, I, I'll possibly record that, do a session with a few people, have one of them record it, and um, it's pretty interesting to see the reaction. Um, as a seer, I'm not that good, to tell you the truth, because, I mean, I see things, but being able to convince people, uh, manipulate them into accepting what you've seen, I'm not good at manipulating people. I'm not very charismatic either, to tell you the truth. Kind of an introvert. You know, there's, maybe you can test yourself for that. There, I think there's a good way of testing yourself if you're an introvert. Extroverts are better. A little more charismatic people, you know, people person. Um, so say you're driving in your car, going somewhere. Do you ever think, I should call someone? Maybe I should call my mom. Well, an introvert, when they're in their car, and they're driving and they're thinking, well, they don't really ever think, should I call anybody? They kind of like being in the quiet. Uh, so there's your test. Do you think you need to call somebody while you're driving or not? And if you're the person that would like to call somebody, I think you're probably a little more uh, situated to be able to convince people of your visions. Um, I don't really like to manipulate people either. I don't like to give bad news. Um, and that's not always good news. Like I said, this little guy right here, it's just, it's ugly. It is, it, the future... And I don't know, that's the thing is, I don't know how far into the future this is. But it's, man, mankind is hurting. And, and nobody wants to hear that. And I don't like to get bad news. So, um, if I can do it, if I have the ability to see, it's, it's not... Um, it's not so much whether or not you have the ability to see. Well, it's definitely not whether the seer stone works. They all work. So like, you know, being able to figure out what they work for um, and then being able to uh, persuade others of the visions that you see. And... Um, and whether or not those come true, like the treasure, um, that's probably a practice thing uh, where you just need to be able to see correctly. Um, like the Joseph Smith seer stone, he used that on numerous occasions to find buried treasure, and it just didn't work. Until he found the gold plates, which nobody else saw, but he saw them. He knew them. He had them. He held them. Other people saw them under cloth. So it took him some practice uh, to be able to find viable treasure 
and what he did find nobody else saw but he he claimed to have found it and translated it through his seer stone oh i don't have that one with me yeah so there's another seer stone i have that helps translate documents uh i tried it with uh uh, Portuguese encyclopedia, and I was able to um, discern what was in that encyclopedia, Ency uh, Portuguese encyclopedia. So um, it does work, and like I said, it will come with a certificate. All my seer stones will come with a certificate to let you know what generally what you see with them. So there's that too to be able to translate. Now, Joseph's stone was pretty interesting because not only did it find treasure <clears throat> that nobody saw, but it was also able to translate the gold plates that nobody saw. So um, I can guarantee that the seer stones that I found are just as effective uh, in his hands especially uh, because if I can do it um, he's just that much more above my abilities to persuade millions of people that he was able to translate an ancient book that nobody saw uh, into what is now known as the Book of Mormon. So, in uh, future videos that I do, uh, I'll I'll demonstrate how this seer stone works, and we'll also have reactions of the people that I am seeing for, which is important because what's the use of a seer stone if you're just seeing stuff and you're uh, like keeping it to yourself, right? It's, it's effectiveness is whether or not you can convince others that your visions are important. And uh, I would say that is what makes a seer stone. It's like a partner system. You know, you have the seer stone and then you have the seer and um, having a good seer, somebody who is very persuasive, manipulative, um, narcissistic. I would say probably a sociopath uh, would be a good seer. But being able to manipulate others and convince others of what you're seeing is like the top priority. Uh, along with, you know, the mystery of an unusual seer stone. Kind of normal looking, but not too normal looking. It's got to have that. Like I said, the sheen is pretty important. The sheen. And I found a field of them. I mean, acres. And, you know, like diamonds, I don't want to just like flood the market with seer stones. I'll probably just, uh, you know, trickle them out there. Just a slow, uh, you know, don't get too ahead of uh, demand. We want to keep the demand for seer stones um, above the supply. So, anyway, I hope this video helps. And have a nice day.